there was an organization at the time called Another Mother for Peace, and it was pretty well known in Southern California. It had a little wonderful little drawing that had a dove and a, a gun or something. And so we put that on the thing, said for Another Mother for Peace, and they said, you can't show that. I said, why? He said, it could be a communist front organization. And we brought on Pete Seeger singing Way Steep in the Big Muddy, which was satirizing uh, Lyndon Johnson about this quagmire of the Vietnam. So there's many of these things, and Joan Baez, we brought on, she dedicated a song to her husband who was going to prison because he resisted the draft up above board and out in front and uh, not going to Canada or something, but he did it in the legal process. Was going to. So they said, now we, so they cut out the fact that he was going to prison for resisting the draft and left in, I'm dedicating this song to my husband who's going to prison. So those are things that got going to be crazy. But then again, they might have been trying to, at that point in time, because it was 69, looked like, uh, no, did Nixon been elected? Not yet. Yeah, he was in. He got in. 68, yeah. yeah. In, in, in April of 69, he, or whatever. When did they inaugurate? February and March. February and March. January. 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 Yeah, so yeah. Up. He was in January, and then a few months later, when he got we were, when he got down to us, they fired us. <laughs> so we were fired, and uh, and uh, I always believed that because Bill, William Paley, Doctor Stanton, and uh, um, Annenberg, Walter Annenberg, who owned the TV Guide at the time, they all wanted to post the court. Ambassador to the Court of St. James, which is an English ambassadorship. It was a plum of, and Annenberg got it. But I always have this magical conversation or an agreement that took place when Nixon got elected. He said, I want to hear about those boys on my case, like it was on Lyndon Johnson's all the time. I want them out. And uh, however you do it, you do it. And, uh, and that's what took place. I, don't, I can imagine the conversation. For the, for they had those conversations, but uh, the minute we were fired, uh, within a week, TV, TV Guide came out with a scathing. Um, CBS is truly doing the right thing. These anti-Americans, these disgusting. I thought it was the same day. It was very close. Like they had prior knowledge, and it was very much like CBS's press release. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there was there was a bigger game going on that uh, that was beyond our our scope of understanding. Well, then they released uh, Agnew on the news media, television news media, to discredit that. They did not. The Nixon White House did not want satire. They wanted criticism. We found it, you know it's obvious one of that stuff. But that was a very we were just part of it. Just part. We were, of it. we were the prototype for the for the enemies list, <laughs> and uh, they said, "Why if we could exert pressure and get." A hit show off, and I'd say, let's you know, let's uh, let's see what else we could come up with, and so that's uh, that's really uh, so we'll never really know no. what mechanizations took place, but we had just been our option been picked up four months earlier, and fired uh, after the election. So for really not, if you look at the product we were delivering, it wasn't wasn't justified. The fact is, that we took them to court and they lost on all counts, every single count, except we didn't. Take them on the First Amendment. Well, we could. Well, there's a side. You know, in, in today's world, uh, everybody's screaming about the First Amendment. Oh, you can't mess with Hollywood because, oh, you can't stop that violence. You just have to ask them not to do it. Uh, gratuitous sex or violence, is because that's a First Amendment. You have freedom of speech, freedom of speech. And Jack Valenti, the president of the motion picture, said it's going to the First Amendment. You cannot stop. And when we were fired, not a word. Yeah. The most obvious, blatant, uh, Violation of the First Amendment was the Smothers Brothers being fired from the show, off the air for their points of view. Not fashionable. And uh, boy, I couldn't find an attorney. I didn't hear Valenti. I didn't hear anybody say First Amendment. Mm -hmm. And here I see here uh, the First Amendment being used to protect uh, Larry Flint. <laughs> protect Hustler all these all these great. all these things Beautiful. now that are just uh, strange. But um, and I guess that's our, our little bit of a legacy uh, that, that we're pretty interesting little characters. That's when we were. That's the only time we were before our, ahead of our time. Yeah. <laughs> See, people said you were ahead of your time. I, I would say if you're ahead of your time, you're not effective. You're not a threat. You're not a threat. If you're right on your time and pushing it, you're. But uh, but for people to help us, we were ahead of time. Nobody cared. 